Hi, this is Nicholas Bell with Ion Cinema here to review The Bay of Silence, which will be available on digital demand August 14th, 2020, courtesy of Vertical Entertainment. It is the latest film directed by Paula van der Oost, the uh, Dutch film director that's probably still best remembered for her 2001 film, Zeus and Zo, which was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film, uh, as well as her 2011 film, Black Butterflies, which star starred Carice van Houten uh, and uh, won that actress uh, best uh, actress at the Tribeca Film Festival that year. Uh, so there's quite the international cast for The Bay of Silence, which is based on a novel by Lisa St. Aubin de Terran, uh, who is the daughter of uh, Jan Carew. Uh, it was adapted by Carolyn Goodall, who also has a small part in the film, the British actress. Uh, this is her first time uh, penning a screenplay. Um, and it starts out in uh, Italy, in the titular uh, Bay of Silence, this beautiful coastal village uh, where Will, played by Clace Bang, uh, is having a romantic getaway with Rosalind, played by Olga Kurilenko. Uh, he proposes. Immediately there's a, a bunch of red flags that suggest that they don't really know each other that well and that uh, Rosalind might be a little bit unbalanced. But fast forward eight months to London. Uh, she falls from a balcony. Uh, very pregnant and uh, has to give birth to their son. The child lives. Uh, they have a party for the son and then we're uh, introduced to a whole cascade of people that will be notable somewhere throughout the film uh, in very quick succession, uh, including uh, Rosalind's ex-stepfather, uh, Milton, played by Brian Cox, uh, her mother, played by Alice Kriege, uh, the babysitter, Candy, played by Shalisha James Davis, uh, Candy's friend, and uh, and then all of a sudden uh, it seems that Rosalind's having another uh, schizophrenic episode is what we come to learn the film says she has. Uh, she is receives a mysterious package from France uh, where it seems that something, a sexual assault that happened in her youth there uh, is the cause for her uh, mental unbalance. Uh, she suddenly runs off with uh, the two twin daughters she has from a previous relationship and the son, uh, leaving uh, Will to figure out where she is and what's happening. He tracks her down, thinks that package, thinks that package to uh, this dilapidated house in Normandy where the twins have become feral, his child is dead, and Olga uh, Kirilenko is holed up in this house uh, out of her mind. Uh, it's his instinct to bury the son, and then the rest of the film is kind of um, uh, fashioned around uh, what happened that made the child die and how they're going to get out from under it so that Rosalind doesn't, uh, isn't incarcerated for it. And then a whole bunch of things are revealed that, uh, based on how the film is set up, we kind of predict uh, with what happened to Rosalind as a child. Uh, so this is, The Bay of Silence, I think, is a very interesting exercise in Adapt adapting material from a novel because so much is packed in here you can uh, visualize or you, you, you can predict that this was a very gripping juicy novel uh, but in order to meet a 90 minute it's actually under 90 minutes uh, running time there's just some tan tangents that should have been um, cut out because it's like we're on a roller coaster from one scene to another and the narrative feels very herky-jerky um, the performances are fine, it's just that there isn't any room for characterization because we are so uh, saturated with uh, this narrative and getting all the complexities of it out. Um, like Carolyn Goodall herself, I think, is kind of unnecessary in this mix. Um, Clay Bang is interesting enough. I, I would recommend uh, The Burnt Orange Heresy, which is about to be re-released, which she also started this year. Um, uh, Again, if you uh, enjoy these kinds of uh, adult thrillers, this is a very Eurocentric flavor. Uh, there are things that are enjoyable in here. Brian Cox is always enjoyable. Alice Kriege, who I, I love seeing, who earlier this year was in uh, Gretel and Hansel, uh, a bit underutilized here. Um, and Olga Kirilenko, I think, does what she can, except it's just a very stereotyped, cliched. I don't think schizophrenia is actually uh, fits the behavior that's exhibited in the film, for instance. Overall, I would give it two out of five stars. Thank you. Hey, this is Eric from MyOwnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.